Happy Monday morning. I am going to do devotion with you, but before I start devotion, I just wanted to take a quick second. The Sunday school kids were brought out here. I can't, I don't know, I'm sure which grade it was, and did some cool chalk drawings at the front of the church. They're big, they're beautiful, they're bold. There's a manger scene over there. Yay, Jesus, everyone loves Jesus. All this cool stuff out here. If you're involved with the classes that did the chalk drawings, thank you so much. It just makes such a beautiful day and it's gonna brighten up my day and so many others. I love it. Thank you for sharing Jesus with the neighborhood. Um, and now we're gonna get into devotion. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed those chalk drawings and I hope you can go check them out for yourself. What a great way to brighten that day up. Um, I love the drawings and the words of children and the teachers that lead them. So thank you again to all those that did that and helped out with that. Um, and here we are, we're just a little bit of a walk from church. We're at Slatterly uh, Softball Field. And this is a place where, um, unfortunately, they're not playing anymore because of the lack of lights. They had to get torn down. Um, but uh, this is where I have seen, and many Redeemer families have seen, lots and lots of softball and great times. So I hope you can check out the team this summer. They're playing again. Um, it's a great place to play outside and, and come and check them out. And, and I'm here because as I think about sporting events, this is probably one of the biggest places where people want to be like someone else. When you're on the, the, the diamond, whether you're playing softball or baseball, whether you're on a field, whether it's soccer, football, um, on a court, basketball, volleyball, um, name your sport, you usually have someone, whether it's a famous athlete or just someone that you know that is better than you, and you want to be like them. So you're working really hard to be like them, to play better and to, to play with their style or their, their um, abilities. And so we work and we try to be like them. And uh, it's a normal thing. Um, I am working with a group called Kindle. And uh, what we work with is we want to be Christ-like servant leaders. So we see Christ as a servant leader, the best servant leader of all time. We want to be like Christ in that way. So no matter what athlete you maybe want to be like and, and play like, I hope that in the end, above all that, you want to be like Christ. And so you might think, we're going to talk about being like Christ in this devotion. And um, in a way, yes, but in a big way, it's how to be not like Christ, which may sound weird. How often do you talk about way not to be like Christ. But today we're going to talk briefly about that. And it's in Luke chapter 24. We're going to start and then we're going to go um, back to chapter 5, Luke 24 and then Luke 5. So in the same book. And this first one is when the disciples see Jesus after the resurrection. It's not the first time anybody sees him, but it's after a number of um, appearances of Jesus. And so everybody's kind of confused. And here comes Jesus. So the, the reading starts at verse um, 36 if you want to join me there. And here's how it goes. Uh, While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. Uh, so he's freaked them out a little bit. He wants them to be peaceful. He wants them to just, uh, whoa, calm down. Listen to what I have to say. Peace be with you. And um, the disciples are in the midst of it, right? They're, they're kind of going, what is this? Um, they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And Jesus said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? And so startling people is not what I'm trying to say. Don't be like Jesus. I think we all could use a good startle and give a good startle in our lives um, in a loving way for good reason. Um, but here is what um, it's, it's starting to see what we were trying to get at here is he was talking about what's on their minds. Jesus knew. Now, in this situation, you might say, well, anybody can know. Their facial expressions probably told the whole story. Uh, but Jesus actually knows what's on people's minds. And there's another section in Scripture, Luke chapter 5. I'm going to try not to dump the Bible on the ground as I um, get to there. There's a little bit of breeze going. Starting at uh, verse um, 20 in chapter 5, it's even more um, observable that Jesus knows what's going on in people's thoughts and minds. Um, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friends, your sins are forgiven. So this is the story of the paralytic whose buddies brought him in to Jesus and, and they couldn't get in. So they tore a hole in the roof. One of my favorite stories. Again, I say that all the time. I know. Uh, but four friends that loved a guy so much that they tore a hole in someone's roof because they knew Jesus was the only person that could help their friend huge thing of faith. And when Jesus saw that, he says, your sins are forgiven. He just forgives their sins. It's amazing. And the next thing that happens, 
the Pharisees and teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And I suppose we'd all be in that road every once in a while thinking, Wait a minute, you can't do that. Only God can do that. Um, the Pharisees were thinking that to themselves. Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked. And then the encounter goes on. Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked. Jesus comes in and says, peace be with you, because he knew that the disciples needed to receive his peace. Here is where we don't want to be like Jesus. We don't want to read minds <laughs> or pretend we can read minds. Jesus could do that and not get in trouble because he actually could, but we can't. And so let's not pretend to be able to do that. We need to ask questions and listen to people. We need to, when we're having a struggle, we need to talk to them and approach them and um, check in on how people are doing. We can't read minds. God doesn't ask us to and encourage us not to. And if you're married or have been married, you know that trying to read people's minds, whether you're a husband or a wife, I know husbands get a bad rap for this, I think wives do too. I think we all kind of fall into this trap and people know it that when we try to read minds or put words in other people's mouths or assume hopefully the best, but a lot of times we assume the worst, things go wrong in a hurry. We can't read people's minds. Let's not try. So there's a place where we don't want to be like Jesus. We don't want to read minds. We want to get to know our brothers and sisters. We need to talk to them. But how do we want to be like Jesus? What does that look like? We're not reading minds, but we're being like Jesus. We care so much about someone that we wish we could read their mind and we take the time to talk to them. We take the time to listen. We take the time to assume the best and we take the time to know that God died for that person and Jesus loves that person. And maybe, just maybe, if Jesus can love that person, we can love that person too. Uh, that's how we can be like Jesus. We don't need to read minds. We want to treat others as Jesus treated so many people on this earth. So this week, there you go. How are you trying to read people's minds? Or how are you trying to assume what, are on, what is on someone else's mind? And how's that going for you? It is a problem I have where I assume or I think I'm so smart I know what other people are thinking or going to be doing or whatever and it gets me in trouble every time and it sets me up for failure and God needs to forgive me. If you're doing that too, let's work together this week and go talk to someone. Stop reading minds. Start seeing that person as a child of God who's loved by God and let's um, get those conversations going and forgiveness going. That is one way we want to definitely be like Jesus. So let's forgive our neighbor. We need it these days. This world's still crazy. It's always going to be crazy. It always has been crazy. Ecclesiastes tells us that. Let's forgive. Let's be like Jesus. But let's not read minds like Jesus. <laughs> we'll leave that to God. To hear our prayers. The prayers that are on our hearts that we haven't verbalized. But God knows. Um, God is a great God. We want to be like him. But not completely like him. We'll let God be God. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, in the sunshiny day of spring where the flowers are starting to come and the color enters the world and the, the warmth comes out and we just celebrate your resurrection because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, just as he said, hallelujah. Um, Lord, help us to not try to read other people's minds. Help us to love you and try to be like you, but not read minds, but to talk to our neighbor, to love our neighbor, to forgive our neighbor, and to remember that they are a child of God too. Lord, to help us remind ourselves that, that, that if you love them with all your heart, so much so that you went on the cross to die for them, maybe we can forgive them too. If their sins pinned you to the cross and you forgave them, maybe we can forgive too. And start talking again and listening and hearing your words. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's Monday. you got a whole week in front of you. I pray it's going to be a wonderful one for you. Let's start this week off with a smile on our face. 
and uh, with Jesus in our hearts, and it can only go up from there. Um, he's it's what a foundation that is. Pray this in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy today. God's blessings. Bye.